uncertainty in measurement. Measurement is a fundamental part of science, and being able to take measurements properly is an invaluable skill to have. For example, what is the length of this blue line? How would we measure it? Certainly, this is something we learned in elementary school, if not before. What we do is we get a ruler. Then we line it up with the end of the line and read off the ruler how long it is. In this case, our one decimeter ruler creates a bit of a problem, in that there are no markings on this part of the ruler to use. This raises an important point about proper measurement, and that is, when making a measurement using an instrument with a continuous scale, called an analog instrument, as opposed to a digital instrument, read all the digits that are marked on the instrument and estimate one more. So, we can only estimate the length of our line, because there are no digits to read. Obviously, the line is less than one decimeter in length. Equally obvious is that it is more than 0.5 decimeters in length. To me, and the estimates are dependent on who is reading them to some extent, it looks closer than three quarters of the way to the one decimeter mark. So I'm going to estimate the length as 0.8 decimeters. Now, you might not be very satisfied with that measurement. You might correctly complain, how could you ever even find a ruler that is only marked off to the nearest decimeter? Why don't we use a better ruler? And you would be right. But this raises an important point. How good our measurement is depends very much on how good the instrument is we use to measure with. So here is our better instrument, a centimeter ruler. Now we can actually read a digit off the scale. Our line is longer than 7 centimeters and shorter than 8 centimeters. Again, we get to estimate how close it is to 8 centimeters. By my eye, it looks well more than halfway. So again, I am going to estimate this digit as an 8. You might think it's closer to a 7, and that would be okay too. It just points out that this is an estimated or uncertain digit. So I'm going to read the length as 7.8 centimeters. Notice that with the first instrument, we got one digit for the length, and that digit was estimated or uncertain. Here, with a better instrument, we get two digits, and we are sure of the value of the first, but uncertain about the value of the second. Again, you might object, but my ruler is marked off to the nearest millimeter. Can't we use that? Okay, let's use an even better instrument. Now we can read two digits off of the scale, and we get to estimate a third digit in the length. To my eye, the line looks like it is just barely short of the 78 millimeter line on the ruler. So I am going to record the length as 77.9 millimeters. What if you thought that the line was right even with the 78 millimeter mark? In that case, you would write 78.0 millimeters. That brings us to a third point about the measurements. The last digit of a reported measurement is always an uncertain or estimated digit. Reported measurements typically have only one uncertain digit. Remember that the first measurement had only one digit, and that digit was an estimated or uncertain digit. The second measurement had two digits, and the second one was uncertain, while the first one was certain. The third measurement had three digits, and the third one was uncertain, while the first two were certain. This is what we were talking about earlier when we talked about how good our instrument is. The concept we are talking about here is precision. The better our instrument is, the more digits we can get in our measurement. And the precision of our measurement is related to the number of digits we can report. 
So, the more digits in our number, the more precise our measurement. Precision is often confused with accuracy, but they are very different ideas. Accuracy refers to how close a measurement is to the true value of a quantity. For the line we measured earlier, the accuracy question is this. Is the line really 77.9 millimeters long? That is, is the ruler we used measuring the actual length or something else? It is easy to imagine a well-used ruler whose end has been worn off enough that when the ruler is lined up to its end, the line projects further up the ruler than it should, and so it is off by a bit. That ruler would not be accurate, but any one of the three rulers we used could fall into this situation. The opposite of accuracy is error, so the larger the error of a measurement, the lower the accuracy of the measurement. Precision refers to how close a series of measurements is to each other. If we each used the third ruler to measure the line, our readings would probably be within 0.1 millimeters of each other. If we each used the first ruler, they would only be within 0.1 decimeters of each other. And using the third ruler, which gives more digits, our measurements would be closer together and therefore more precise. In our measurement of the line, the third measurement was the most precise, and the first the least precise, because of the particular instruments we used for the measurements. The opposite of precision is uncertainty. The greater the uncertainty, the less the precision of the number. Let's take a look at the picture for a moment. Ideally, as scientists, we would like our measurements to be both precise and accurate. Just like someone throwing darts, we would like to have all our throws together, good precision, and in the bullseye, good accuracy. This is not always possible, however. Sometimes our measurements are precise, but not accurate, like the cluster of darts over on the edge of the target or they are relatively accurate, but not very precise, like darts clustered near the middle, but not in the bullseye. What we do not want is poor precision and poor accuracy, like this last picture, where the darts are spread out over the whole target. Given a choice between good precision and poor accuracy, or good accuracy and poor precision, which would scientists prefer? You might think they would prefer accuracy, but you would be wrong. Scientists prefer good precision over good accuracy. In part, this is because it is nearly impossible to improve the precision of a measurement. Precision is determined by the instrument we use to make the measurements. Another reason is that it is often fairly easy to improve the accuracy of our measurements. For example, suppose we know our ruler had worn away one centimeter of the end. The accuracy of our measurements can be improved by simply subtracting one centimeter from each of the measurements, just as the accuracy of our dart throws can be improved by simply aiming lower and to the left. There are certain principles that we use when we work with measurements. One, there are two kinds of numbers in science, measured numbers and exact or counted numbers. There are numbers that clearly have been counted rather than measured. Things like five people or 15 tennis balls or 92 trees. These numbers are exact, which means there is no uncertainty in the number. Five people means exactly five people, not 4.973 rounded to five. Two, units tell us whether a number has been measured or counted. 
number is not a counted number simply because it is a whole number. Five people is a counted number, while five meters is a measured number because people are counted but meters are measured. Look at the units to tell you whether the number is measured or counted. Three. All measured numbers have uncertainty. The numbers may have different levels of uncertainty, but all have some uncertainty. Four. When a number with uncertainty is combined with other numbers, the resulting number has uncertainty. Whenever we combine measured numbers, regardless of the mathematical operation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or whatever else, the answer has uncertainty as well, even if the calculator gives us a number that seems to be exact. For example, if you travel 48.6 miles, a measured number, at an average speed of 24.3 miles per hour, another measured number, it would take you two hours to arrive. This number is also a measured number. That is, it has uncertainty. 5. Results of calculations with measured numbers should not be expressed to show greater precision than the numbers used to obtain them, or less precision than the numbers allow. When we report our answer to a calculation, we should report it so that it is expressed to an appropriate precision. That is, we should not report too many digits, this is the most common mistake, or too few digits, which happens occasionally.